Rush Limbaugh's wit and wisdom has blessed the lives of many Americans. You can hear some of that wit and wisdom here on the James A. Hendricks School of Leadership. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I'm back to reporting daily the news. And so, you know, there may be little vistas where I don't report the news. I, I give us a political blast in the past or something like that. And here's why. It's easy to get saturated. Now, without any further ado, the topic for the day is... So should socialism be eradicated from America? All right, now I'm going to give, I'm going to foreign policy news from CBN News, case in point. Listen to this. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held a private meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu today. The prime minister is reportedly not optimistic about a deal. Julie Saul has a story from Jerusalem. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is back in the Middle East for the ninth time since the start of the war in Gaza as ceasefire talks with Hamas seem to be faltering. This is a decisive moment, um, probably the best, maybe the last opportunity to get the hostages home. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. All right, first of all, I'm not going to argue my own position without giving these per- Socratic parameters. And, and, and then I'm going to give a comment about what, what we just heard, okay? Because it is, I'm telling you, it is bone chilling what I just heard. Okay? Number one, the answer for the should socialism be eradicated from America. I don't believe in the yes no toggle switch. I don't believe in it depends. The answer lies between this one equation. Needs times faith equals motivation. Now, we start once again with the news story. And then I'll let you know. Secretary of State Antony Blinken held a private meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu today. The Prime Minister is reportedly not optimistic about a deal. Julie Saul has a story from Jerusalem. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is back in the Middle East for the ninth time since the start of the war in Gaza as ceasefire talks with Hamas seem to be faltering. This is a decisive moment. Um, probably the best maybe the last opportunity to get the hostages home. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. I'm going to tell you something right now. Biden has had plenty of opportunity in the past 10 months. The past 10 months, I tell you, to get those hostages home. He could have been condemnatory against Hamas instead of leaning on Israel. But no. The deep state, which is part of the degenerate culture, all the labels and stereotypes and BS, which we're going to be uncovering this election cycle, and trust me, we are, it's from the deep state. So what we're, what we're covering is what we're covering. Any American... Born in America, that claims to be a Christian, and 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 Biden claims to be a, a, a Catholic. I, I don't have anything condemnatory against um, Catholicism or any other Judeo-Christian religion. But I gotta say this: if you read your Bible, you must know Israel has a right to exist, and Hamas don't, and Hamas, of course, says no. So who is blinking? The Viceroy of Emperor Joe think he's talking to. The majority of my audience are devout conservative Christians, and this guy is a diplomat with an attitude. Listen to the rest of this. To get a ceasefire and to put everyone on a better path to enduring peace and security. 
Blinken met with Israeli President Isaac Herzog, who pointed out Israel is fighting on multiple fronts, including terrorism, in the last 24 hours. A 38-year-old Israeli civilian security guard, a father of three, was killed by a Palestinian he worked with in Judea and Samaria, and there was apparently another planned attack. Last night, we've witnessed a, a suspected major terror attack in Tel Aviv, which is under investigation with a possible suicide bomber. And this morning, soldiers have been attacked in Yara. Uh, Yara is on the border with Lebanon by Hezbollah terrorists uh, with drones. Hezbollah continues to launch near-daily aerial attacks on northern Israel, with some 55 rockets fired on Saturday alone. And an IDF drone attack in the West Bank city of Jenin killed two senior Hamas operatives this weekend. In another incident, top Hamas official Osama Hamdan walked out of a CNN interview when he was asked if Hamas accepts any responsibility for all the Palestinian deaths it's caused by... Pause, pause. Of course he's going to go to CNN. C CNN, think about the words, the words itself. And people, people can get mad at me. They may censor me. They may say what I have to say, criticize what I have to say. But it's the Communist News Network. Oh, Jimmy got to get in trouble here. Jimmy got to get in trouble here. Listen to me. And Hamas walked out of even that meeting. That interview. If that tells you... Common courtesy in diplomat and diplomacy. Why on earth would you want to negotiate with terrorists? Forget me, my fellow Americans. <clears throat> but reason in American politics and foreign policy has gone out the window. Reason. That's why everybody's, you know disagreeing reactively and going crazy. Using them as human shields. And on the problems with the ceasefire talks, Hamas is blaming Netanyahu, writing, we place full responsibility on Netanyahu for the failure of the mediator's efforts and the failure to reach a deal. Hello? Who engaged the first attack? Come on now. Common sense. Common sense. Okay. We're going to go through the rest of this, okay? If you don't Netanyahu have... says Israel is conducting very complex negotiations with a murderous, uninhibited, and recalcitrant terrorist organization. I would like to emphasize, up until now, Hamas has been completely obstinate. It did not even send a representative to the talks in Doha. Therefore, the pressure needs to be directed at Hamas and Sinwar, not the government of Israel. If the talks to end the Gaza war fail, it may mean Iran and its proxies would launch major attacks on Israel. The New York Times reporting the Iranian government delayed strikes on Israel to give time for the ceasefire talks to succeed. Israeli forces say they're ready for such attacks. Israel is not in the best neighborhood. We have been preparing for an attack and we are ready for anything. We, there are diplomatic attempts to to de-escalate the situation, but we are ready for everything and anything on any front. Israel believes Hezbollah could use failed talks as an excuse to launch rocket barrages at Tel Aviv, the Jewish nation's largest city. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. I hope you pay attention to that interview that Osama Hamdan did on CNN. Uh, I applaud the CNN anchor. Uh, for trying to hold him to facts and, and hold him to his own experience. Uh, the anchor was quite experienced and quite knowledgeable about the situation. But will our State Department wake up to the ideology that Osama Hamdan was clearly putting out on CNN, that none of it was their fault, that all of this is the fault of the occupiers, and, and no acknowledgement of the IDF and Israel withdrawing from Gaza, turning it over to the Gazans, 
having free elections, all of that under the Bush administration. The Bush administration believed that if democracy came to Gaza, they would elect peace. They would want to live at peace with Israel. Uh, they didn't. They elected Hamas to lead them. They elected a terror group spawned by the Muslim Brotherhood in, in Egypt. And you look at their charter and it's absolutely horrific what they want to do. You look at their charter and, and what they view as the role for women. It is absolutely incredible that anyone on the left in Europe or the United States would say, we're behind Hamas. We want to protest what Israel is doing. It, it, absolutely, truth has been turned upside down. I hope our leadership and I pray our leadership wakes up to this ideology and says, we can't negotiate with you. There's no point in it. If you continue to say Israel is completely at fault, Israel needs to be wiped off the map, every Jew in Israel needs to be killed, if that is truly what you believe, then it's time for you to end. That's what I hope our foreign policy is going to be going forward. Stop the, the charade of we think diplomacy, we haven't given up on diplomacy. Realize that when they're talking, they really believe that. Uh, they are holding on to it. And when you look at the history, any Palestinian leader that comes to peace with Israel, and, and it, actually any Arab leader. So Anwar Sadat, he came to peace with Israel. He was assassinated. The king of Jordan, when he made peace with Israel in 1948, he was assassinated on the Temple Mount right in front of his own son. They do it publicly. They do it repeatedly. Let's recognize the ideology for what it, what it is. Let's stand against it because we believe in democracy. We believe in freedom. We believe believe that Israel is the best source of freedom for the Middle East. It's not an apartheid state. Muslims get to sit in the Knesset. They're minority groups that are protected. You look at the Christian population in Israel, it's the only place in the Middle East where the Christian population is growing. That's a government we need to get behind and stand behind. So today, let's pray for Israel. Her need is dire, and she needs to know that she has friends in the world. There you go. There you go. And, 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 and I'm saying, in this case, when we're dealing with socialism, both parties are corrupt. Both parties over the, over the, over the decades, from one point or another, has embraced some form of socialism. Now, he was. Now, I, I disagree with a lot of media outlets, even conservatives, that say that we're a democracy. We're not. We're not a democracy. We're not to become a democracy. Even Dr. Abramson, my political theory uh, professor, and, you know, um, I give him a pseudonym to protect his identity. Uh, because I'm thinking at this point, and I could be wrong, he could be deceased. Um, he taught us that we're not, America is not a pure democracy, it's a republic. Because ancient Greece tried democracy and it failed. Just like Bush with Gaza. Let's be, let's be point blank, okay? Read your Bible, you'll discover that Gaza is best under the control of Israel. Okay? And, and I, I know some of my titles, a lot of my titles, to avoid being mad, to avoid raging, this fall is going to be Socratic so that I don't get angry. Uh, because it's easy to rage. What with both sides, media, fear-mongering and scare-mongering, just to try to get looked. Well, all I can say is a conservative federalist is vote your conscience. Vote your conscience. And we're going we're gonna to deal with this the best way we can. And I hope I, listen to me. I want us to pray right now for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this day. We thank Thee for Christians and Jews everywhere and Islam who longs for peace and to stand for that. We pray against the degenerate culture of war, the degenerate culture of, of collectivism and um, stereotypes on, on, on any particular political faction or, or party in this country and in the world. We pray against fear and scaring people and making people angry. And we pray to thee, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem. Please be, please be with Israel at this time of need. Because we know that thou knowest us. Thou knowest the covenant people of Israel. And that we as Christians, by virtue of our baptism, we are grafted in. And, and by virtue of our faith in Christ, we are also grafted in. And say this in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. There you go. All right. I hope this answers your question. But in reality, and this is going to be a common theme in, in James A. Hendricks School of Leadership, when we're talking about politics from now on, it's going to be an Socratic framework so you can be proactively informed and learn for yourself. Okay? Because truth is, truth is, we can believe what is told by the talking heads on both sides of the aisle, or we can go out and be proactively informed ourselves. Okay? And, and, and that's, that's something I preach. Is to be proactively informed. Don't, don't believe something that is said on the media on both sides. You research it and find out what you think the truth is for yourself and vote your conscience, okay? That, that's, that's key for me to talk to you about. I mean, just let me tell you something. Yes, the, the deep state is, is a dangerous thing. It can take away our rights. Uh, it's, it's a problem. Kamala. She has no clear policy roadmap beyond something that, that both Trump and Biden has already given. So that's the problem. That's the problem. And we can, we, let me tell you something. We can do something with this. We can be better for something with this because I'm telling you, we can still shine the light for hope for America. There is still hope for America. But we've got to stop spreading fear. Yes, fight for our rights. Be strong about that. But let's stop saying it's now or never or give up. Okay? That's degenerate culture. And I'm telling you, whatever part of you're doing, this, this is part of that. Stop that. All right? Because there's people like me that um, we have our ideology, but we can be objective about it. Hope you enjoy listening to the James A. Hendrick School Leadership. And if you like it to hear, please subscribe. Become a part of the James A. Hendrick School of Leadership Classroom. This is Jimmy Hendrick saying until next time, uh, keep up your faith. Please keep up your hope. I say this every day when I need to self suit Jesus saves and I'm okay. So I want you to put this down in your very soul right now. This very very being. Jesus saves and we're all going to be okay. Take care and be proactively informed. And remember this from the bottom of my heart, Jimmy loves you. I really love you. God bless you. And please, have a, have a good day. See you tomorrow for Public Affairs Tuesday.